In 2007, Steve Murphy was the editor of the Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book, a book he often wrote himself. This volume of Tales was an anthology series with stories from the past, present, and future of the Mirage universe. But that was his last year editing the book. And on his way out, he wrote a controversial story I already talked about in this other video. In that story, after avenging the death of his partner, it was implied that Leonardo passed away of old age in the far future. Was this story canon? That is another controversy on its own, but the then-editor of the book, Dan Berger, received strict instructions from the Turtles co-creator, Peter Laird, that characters' deaths were off-limits and could only be written by himself. Was that rule created after Murphy killed off two characters in one issue? And what about the bleak future of the Turtles, a future that Peter himself already seemed to hint at in 1992? What happened to the original Ninja Turtles in the future? That is what we are going to explore in today's video. But, Turtle Nexus, you may ask, wasn't the last Ronin supposed to be the future of the Turtles that Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird envisioned? Yes, it was, but there is something you need to understand about Mirage Comics. It was an editorial mess. Kevin and Peter gave writers and artists a lot of creative freedom when it came to telling stories with the Turtles. But the main element of this bleak future didn't start in the Mirage comics. Oddly enough, it began in the Archie Adventures. In one of these stories, the Turtles ended up displaced 100 years in the future, at a time when the ice caps were still melting and most of New York was underwater. Murphy, who was the writer of that book, continued telling stories about this greenhouse Earth's future until the book was cancelled. But the idea of a flooded Earth was so impactful and fascinating that the concept made its way into the Mirage universe. Just remember that Peter Laird never told anyone where the story was going, so any writers that did tales taking place in the future were simply making it up as they went along. Because none of this was coordinated, some of those stories taking place in the future are not considered canon, and the ones that are, are not necessarily connected to the future we will be talking about today. If you want to see a complete timeline of the future of the Mirage universe with non-canon stories included, you can check out the timeline made by Mark Pellegrini for his TMNT Entity blog. One of those non-canon stories worth mentioning is Choices, a short story that was published in another Steve Murphy book, Puma Blues. This was the first time we saw an old, one-eyed Raphael in a post-apocalyptic future. Despite Raphael's appearance, this future doesn't fit with the one we would eventually see. Despite being a story by Eastman and Laird, its place in continuity is debatable. Another non-canon story I have to mention is TMNT. Odyssey. The reason this story is non-canon is that it is fan fiction. It was an attempt to continue the stories I will cover in this video. I will talk about this story another day. Many stories in the canon hint at the timeline's future, but the actual first significant event occurred at the beginning of TMNT Volume 4. Now, I still have to make a video on this Ninja Turtles volume, but it is centered around the return of the Utroms, this time publicly and with the intent to introduce mankind to the rest of the universe. But there was something mysterious about the whole thing. No one seemed to know what the Utrom's real intentions were, but as we would later learn, the Utrom's came to Earth to preserve humankind, knowing that the planet was heading into a cataclysm. One of the main plots of the comic was that the turtles were growing apart. Because of that, Michelangelo would end up in space, fighting side by side with the Triceraton Republic, an unfinished story that I will talk about some other day. Another arc from this volume that is worth mentioning is the death of Splinter. Even though it wasn't the real Splinter, you can check out this other video where I explain it in more detail. But what you need to know is, as far as Volume 4 went, the Turtles were fatherless and maybe about to reunite with their sensei. There was a significant time jump between Volumes 2 and 4. The events of the last volume were supposed to happen in the future. That means that it didn't take place in the early 2000s when it was published, but later than that. And it is important to make that distinction because the stories taking place in the flooded New York of the future were just a couple of years away from when the book stopped being published. In the story Dark Shadows, published in Tales No. 69 in April 2010, we finally learn what happened to the Earth and what the Utroms were trying to accomplish. But in this story written by Dan Berger, the floods were explained as a massive tectonic shift that caused the Earth's axis to rotate. This caused some areas of the world to end up underwater while creating new land masses through the shift of the oceans. 
This story was centered around Shadow Jones. I already went into this story in great detail in this other video, but here is the essence of it. Raphael asked Renette for help to decide whether he should teach ninjutsu to Shadow or not. Renette revealed to him that in most timelines, Shadow died young, fighting a foot mystic. Teaching her ninjutsu would keep her alive, but would take her into a path of anger that would lead to her doing something horrible to Donatello and eventually slicing Raphael's left eye. Raphael decided to teach her anyway, just to prolong her life. This story made it clear that, while many humans left Earth with the Utrams, many others were left behind, the Turtles and their extended supporting cast. For example, although Michelangelo may have left with the Utrams, we will never know. We also do not know what happened to Casey Jones or if April died or simply ceased to exist. We know that the Foot Clan, or at least a section of it, was now under the control of Chaacho. As for what happened to Donatello, it was never specified, but he appeared to be blind in a future appearance. So many Die Hard fans connected the dots between the two things. As for Raphael losing an eye, this was made to explain the other appearances of Raphael with a patch, something that also happened in the Archie comics. That story was meant to connect all the dots of many other stories published by Mirage over the years. One that influenced the rest was the story Old Times, published in Plastron Cafe No. 1 in 1992. In this story, an older Donatello runs a training simulation that he stops after seeing his brothers. This story had many things to think about. First of all, Donatello finally wore his wrestling gear. I explained in this other video that the wrestling gear was supposed to be the turtle's normal fighting gear, but it ended up being used in the Archie comics. In any case, this is a clearly older Donatello, but the story took place in the early 21st century in Japan. The story implied that Donatello was the only brother left of his clan, and that he had some kind of immersive simulation system named Chet. Of course, there was no plan to continue this story, and therefore it is hard to place it in the timeline. I would actually put the story in the early 22nd century. We would learn about Raphael's future much earlier, in the second printing of the Michelangelo's Micro Series, in a story called A Christmas Carol by Jim Lawson. Yes, this was another take on the Dickens story, but in this case, it is Raphael who got visited by three ghosts. The future Christmas ghost showed him his future self, living in the swamps and missing one eye. The story didn't really give many details about it, but it was based on that one story by Eastman and Laird that appeared on Puma Blues a couple of years before. The next story I have to mention was already covered in this other video, but was very controversial. It was Swan Song, published in Tales No. 41 in December of 2007. In that story, Leonardo and Radical became a couple, but that happiness ended in tragedy after complete carnage exacted revenge on Radical. This took Leonardo into a path of vengeance, and while he tried to forgive complete carnage for what he did, he let him no other choice but to take his life. After this, Leonardo abandoned the path of the warrior and apparently lived the last years of his life living in a tree house. This story broke all of Peter Laird's rules, a turtle having sex with a human and the death of two characters, although Leonardo's death was only implied. Oddly, this story was published after Murphy was moved to a different role in the company. Murphy left his editing role in issue 37 but already had stories in production, and this was one of them. It is unlikely that the change happened because of this story. In fact, Peter admits never having read it, but more on that later. Dan Berger took over after Murphy as an editor, and he would also write many issues himself. One of these stories was A Day in the Life, from Tales No. 55, in February 2009. This framed story is remembered by an older Raphael living in a flooded New York. Thanks to this story, we know that Donatello is still alive and that he created a robot version of April. Raphael also said goodnight to Mikey, implying he was probably still in space. The April robot was originally going to be an alien girlfriend, but Peter Laird suggested changing it to a robot. Dan also didn't know what Peter's plans were for Michelangelo, and since at the moment he was in space, he decided to end the issue with a starry sky, just in case Peter decided to leave Michelangelo there forever. So apart from Michelangelo probably going to space, we know that the Turtles traveled a lot, especially to Japan, where Raphael fought against zombies in Tales No. 40, a story that took place in the year 2060. He was apparently on a mission to protect a baby. This baby was Karai's granddaughter, Matoko, but the whole situation was planted by Karai herself, who missed the good old days. And that was Raphael's last known story. 
Leonardo had another appearance in Tales issues 13 and 14 from July 2005, where he fought side by side with earlier versions of himself. In the story I mentioned, he would die in 2099 or after that year. The last story in this timeline is not even a story. All the issues of Tales of the TMNT started with a frontispiece, and for the collected treasury edition of 2007, it was decided to replace the original pages with a new framing story by Steve Murphy and Jim Lawson. As we read the book, we witness the older turtles as they tell us their stories, but in the end, we find out it was all part of Donatello's simulation. This was a clearly old and blind Donatello, who is preparing to go to sleep, apparently for the last time, as we have to assume by the presence of Renette. After crying for him, she decided to go back to the past, to a time when all of them were alive and together. And that was the end of the turtles. Well, all of them except for Mikey. And this is where you would usually leave a comment about Mikey becoming Parallax in the fan fiction project I mentioned before, but there is a reason I didn't include that in this video. You see, we never got a revised timeline of all the canon stories, but Peter Laird himself admitted he never read that story about Radical's death, and he wasn't really aware of Donatello being blind in the future. That means that all of the stories happening in the future were probably not canon. Perhaps they are a possible future, but even the fact that the Utrums came to Earth to preserve mankind would need to be taken with a grain of salt. Stories that take place in the future are constantly in flux when it comes to comic books, so this shouldn't surprise anyone. And while it is true that Jim Lawson went on to help Andrew Moden in continuing the events of those frontispieces for a fan-made project, he also participated in the 30th anniversary special, and the story he decided to tell wasn't about a bleak future, but the opposite. He did a story where the Turtles got together with Shadow, who was attending college but still continuing her ninja training. Since this story took place a few years after Volume 4, one could assume that the bleak future was averted or at least postponed. So, in the end, I feel like the future shown to us by Murphy, Lawson, Berger, and sometimes Eastman and Laird was never written in stone. It was the result of a publisher with very lax rules when it came to creative freedom. And while Volume 4 may never be finished, it is in Peter Laird's rights to continue publishing it and finish the story. So who knows, maybe one day we will get an answer about the last days of the original Ninja Turtles. Thanks for watching.